This video is an introduction to writing your own functions in R. And we want to be able to write our own functions for a couple of different reasons. First, it lets us write code in easy to understand chunks. So if you've ever written uh, more than 100 lines of code before and just one big continuous string, it can get really difficult to follow the flow of the code and understand what's going on. The other reason why we want to be able to write our own functions is to write reusable code. So it's not uncommon to want to do something very similar over and over and over again. And writing our own functions is one efficient way to do that. The reason we need to break code up into pieces to make it understandable uh, has to do with the fact that the human brain can really only hold about seven things uh, in memory, uh, in short-term memory, for a brief period of time. And so we need to write programs that don't require remembering more than about seven things at once. And so what that allows us to do is understand code without understanding all of the details. So, for example, uh, if I write the code sum of the vector 1, 2, 3, we all know at this point that this is going to add up the values in the vectors, and 3 plus 2 plus 1 should be equal to 6. But what do you know about how the sum function is doing that? I'm not even sure myself. I, I could make some guesses. Uh, it probably involves something we haven't even learned in class yet. And so by uh, having this function that we've used before, it hides all of that detail. We don't need to understand how the sum function is doing what it's doing. We just need to understand what it does and how to get it to do that. And so all functions should work as this simple, single, conceptual chunk where we understand what it does. From a reuse perspective, uh, many of you have probably already found that you wanted to do something similar, but not quite the same, repeatedly. And so you've copied and pasted code, and then changed it a little bit to do the next thing. We've done this in some of our assignments. Uh, but it's generally inefficient and error-prone to copy code. Have you ever copied some code, forgotten to change some piece of it, and then gotten an error or the wrong answer? It happens all the time. Uh, to me, to lots of professionals, copy-paste errors are one of the biggest sources of error uh, in computing. And so we have this concept uh, that if code occurs in more than one place, it will eventually be wrong in one of them. And so functions allow us to reuse code while changing the details of what's going on. So what does this look like? The general way to write our own function is structured like this. And this isn't going to work, but I'm going to write it to just show uh, what each part of a function definition looks like. We start with the function name. We then assign it a function, and function is a, a key word here. And then we'll put uh, parentheses, and inside those parentheses go the inputs or the arguments. And we can have multiple arguments here, like we've used in multiple functions before. And then we add a set of curly braces. These are often uh, on the same key as the square brackets that we've used for subsetting, uh, but using the shift key. And once you've created those curly brackets, hit enter. And then inside these curly brackets, we do some calculations. So let's say I calculate some sort of output value and assign it the results of something. So we'll call this do something uh, on the inputs. 
And so this just represents us doing calculations using code uh, that can and normally will involve the inputs. And then when we're done, we use the return function to return the piece of information that we want back to the user as the output of this function. So if this was the sum function, uh, this input here would be a vector of numbers, and then there would be some code here that added all of those numbers together, and then we would return that summed value out to the user. And this function name would be sum. The braces in this example indicate that all of the lines of code occurring between those braces uh, are a group that gets run together. And we can actually see this uh, by using some braces outside of a function. So if I type in here a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3 and then a plus b, now, if I uh, go to the end, end of this bracket and run the code, we'll see that it actually runs it all at once. So it first creates A, then it creates B, and then it creates A plus B. And so when we see brackets like this, and we'll see them repeatedly over the next few weeks, it means that this is all of the code uh, inside this function or inside other things that we'll learn about over the next few weeks, and it all gets run together as part of this function. And so when we run a function, it runs all of these lines of code in the braces together using the arguments uh, that are provided in parentheses and then returns the output value, whatever value is in this return statement. So let's look at an actual example of this. Let's create a function for calculating the volume of a shrub from its length, width, and height, something we've used as an example before. Let's call this function calc shrub vol for volume. We then add the assignment operator, the word function, parentheses, and now we need the names of the inputs that we're going to provide to the function. And so we'll have length, width, and height. Now we add our curly brackets and hit enter. And then we're going to write the code that will do the calculation. And I'm going to start by calculating the area of the shrub and then calculating its volume. So we'll say that area is assigned the value that's the product of length times width. So we take the length times the width to get the area of the shrub. And then we'll use that result to calculate the volume. And so we'll say that the volume is the area of the shrub times its height. And so now we've calculated the result that we want back. And so we can then return, and then parentheses, the variable that we want to return, volume, to the outer program. Okay. And so now we'll go ahead and run this. And what we'll see over here in our environment is that we have a new value, uh, calc shrub vol, and it's a function that takes inputs length, width, and height. And so we've created this function, but we haven't actually run it yet. So, so far, all we've done is define the instructions for doing a calculation. We haven't actually used them to calculate something yet. To 
actually use the function, we then need to call it with some arguments, just like we would any function that we've used so far in R. And so we would type calc shrub vol, and then parentheses, and then provide our three arguments. So let's say we've got a length of 0 0.8, a width of 1.6, and a height of 2.0. And then we can run this function. And we'll see uh, that we get back an output. That output is the product of these three numbers, because we first multiply two of them, and then we multiply them uh, by the height, and so this is those three numbers multiplied together. And so we've actually created and run our own function. And just like with all other functions, this value hasn't been stored anywhere. We see that there's no 2.56 over here. Uh, and so if we want to store the output of our own functions for later use, we have to store them in a variable. So we could call this shrub vol and then assign it the output of calc shrub vol uh, with the arguments 0 0.8, 1.6, and 2.0. And now we'll see that we've stored that shrub volume so that we can work with it later. So that's a quick introduction to writing our own functions. These functions start with the function name, an assignment operator, and then the keyword function, followed by parentheses, and then the named arguments that we want to be able to pass that function as inputs. We then add a set of curly braces, and then inside those curly braces, we put all of the lines that are going to get run in that function. Those can be as many lines as we want to produce a final value. And then we use the return function to return that output value to the main program. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, I would buy you a green dress, but not a real green dress that's cruel. <laughs>